Hello, this is Manny, Manny Villapando from Hope Faith Arts, Crafts and Designs. And today I'm going to be talking to you about the recent purchase that I made, which is the Makita Cordless Random Orbit Sander, model number XO, B is in Bravo, 01. Now this particular model, I purchased it from Amazon.com and I bought it for $99. I'm pretty sure that if you look around, you may find it for a little bit less or perhaps a little bit more. Uh, the reason I bought the Makita Orbital Sander is uh, for a few reasons. Uh, I'm doing some laser cutting on a MDF and I've noticed that my MDF on some occasions will not cut all the way through and so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to see if with the with a heavy grit I'm able to use the orbital sander and sand down to where the the laser actually cut all the way through yes I can probably use a planer or uh, another type of uh, tool but right now for the moment I'm, I'm experimenting with the um, with the orbital sander and I like this uh, orbital sander because it uses the LXT 18 volt battery and I haven't used it yet but as soon as I uh, put it to use I'm gonna take some videos of the um, orbital sander so you guys can see and um, form your opinion on it. Uh, so far I do like it it's not that heavy it's um, uh, this is one tool that you're not gonna be carrying as you're using this is one tool that you place on a surface and it does come with from what I understand three uh, variable speeds and you're able to control the um, the speeds between I believe uh, 7000 um, OPMs, 9500 OPMs and 1100 uh, o OPMs so in a little bit what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna read over the manual and uh, cover some of the basics that Makita uh, has on the manual here. Well getting started here with the manual on page one we're basically looking at the um, introduction for the instruction manual. It just gives you an outline of what the tool looks like and the model number which again is the XO B is in Bravo 01 we are in page 2 of the manual and we're discussing again the orbital sander XO B as in Bravo 01 earlier we covered how many orbits per minute and yes there's a low speed a middle speed and a high speed and in the low speed the orbits per minute you're looking at 7,000 orbits per minute in the middle speed you're looking at 9,500 orbits per minute and in the high speed you're looking at 1,100 orbits per minute the device weigh, uh, weighs uh, 3.1 pounds uh, without the battery and 3.6 pounds with the battery and the rated voltage is 18 volts DC. Uh, the standard battery cartridge that it uses, you can use the B as in Bravo, L as in Lima, 1815N as in Nora, or the B as in Bravo, L as in Lima, 1830, or the B as in Bravo, L as in Lima, 1840. I'm pretty sure if you ha if you go online and you do the search for these batteries you will find what their specifications are right below that you have the pretty much the general warnings for the safe tool, uh, safety tool and it covers some of the electrical safety work area safety uh, personal safety a lot of this stuff is uh, common sense so if you go over to the Makita website I'm sure that you will get a glimpse at the manual. I'm not gonna cover too much of the uh, common sense um, information here. Let's move on to page 3. Moving on to page 3 of the manual it goes again over some of the um, 
some of the uh, safety uh, for the for the tool and for yourself as well and uh, talks about the power tool use and care the battery tool the use and care and service so in below below that you also got on page three some of the sander safety warnings and I will read that because some a lot of people are not too familiar or they haven't used the orbital sander so like with most power tools use your safety glasses safety goggles and um, ensure that you hold the, the tool firmly even though it is a cordless uh, tool I just tried it er earlier with uh, the battery on it and it has a pretty good spin so hold on to the tool firmly when in use do not leave the tool running that's very important uh, do, if you're gonna stay uh, walk away uh, make sure you turn off the tool completely and um, ensure that if there's other people around that you remove the battery just for safety reasons too this tool is not waterproof so do not use on um, uh, surfaces that have water or or there's water near nearby uh, um, ventilate your work area adequately when you perform the sanding operations the even though there's a dust collector on the machine itself I I depending on what is it what is it that you're sanding uh, just to be on the safe side wear proper um, um, uh, breathing mask or uh, or do the, your work on a well ventilated area uh, having said that and it continues with talking about how some of the material contains chemicals to be toxic and again that's why it's a good idea just to wear a good um, respirator and avoid some of these materials which you may or may not know that are actually toxic use the tool to sand um, use of this tool to sand some products paint and wood could cause exposure or expose user to dust containing hazardous substances uh, use a uh, respiratory pr protection basically which I just mentioned earlier be sure that there are no cracks or breakage on the pads or the, the pad before use the cracks or breakage may cause a personal injury um, I'm pretty sure that it's referring over to the uh, to the base of the orbital orbital tool and the last warning that it has do not let comfort of or do not let comfort or fam familiarity with product gain from repeated use replace strict adherence to safety rules for the subject subject product misuse or failure to follow the safety rules stated in this instruction manual may cause serious personal injury and we are done with page three moving on to page four uh, there is a legend with symbols that describe the volts, direct current no load speed and the orbits per minute it continues with important safety instructions for bar battery cartridge and I would definitely spend some time reading that the batteries are, are I have had no problems with the battery with Makita batteries as a matter of fact uh, I'm pretty impressed uh, but then again I do live in California Southern California so we're not exposed to extreme cold weather we have had this year 2015 um, high temperatures in, 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 in in the upper hundreds, uh, cor correction, in the lower hundreds, and the, I don't, yeah, God forbid, in the upper hundreds, but um, so far the batteries have not really had any significant um, anything for me to notice that that they're malfunctioning or they're not uh, storing the uh, the electricity. I mean, I haven't noticed anything, but again when you get an opportunity if you do want to take a look at the at the batteries of these uh, uh, for these Makita tools 
definitely go onto their website and do uh, do some research for the batteries. Uh, so let's see, tips for maintaining maximum battery life. Okay, that still covers the battery. Let's move on forward. Functional description. Always be sure that the tool is switched off and the battery cartridge is removed before adjusting or checking function of the tool. One of the things that I noticed with this specific orbital sander, and this is actually the first time that I've seen these type of buttons on the orbital sander. It's it's they're not your standard flip switch anymore. They're actually uh, very subtle. Uh, there's only two buttons on the orbital sander. One of them's to turn it off, and the other one, the other button, controls actually the three speeds. Press one, you get the low. Press again, you get the medium, and you press again, you get the high. So the I'm not honest. Uh, honestly, I'm not sure what would happen if and when you actually are using the tool and for whatever reason the, the battery may come off or maybe the battery runs low. Again, this is a new product that I'm, I'm testing right now, so uh, I would seriously doubt that if the battery were to... Uh, be depleted while in use that if I were to exchange the battery that the tool would actually stay on in the on position or in the on mode I if it does and that that would be a, a concern for me because of the fact that in my opinion it shouldn't do that it should be that the minute you actually remove the battery that the tool actually will go by default to the off position but again I haven't I haven't had the uh, experience with the tool, so uh, there is a caution over here. It reads, always switch off the tool before installing or removing off the battery. Hold the tool on the battery cartridge firm firmly when installing or removing battery cartridge. Failure to hold the tool and the battery cartridge firmly may cause them to slip off your hands and result in damage to either the tool or the battery, or and, and or personal injury to yourself. To remove the battery cartridge, slide it from the tool while sliding the button on the front of the cartridge. Uh, this is a pretty self-explanatory. If you are familiar with the batteries and the Makita tools, it's actually just normal standard way of sliding on and off a battery. And having said that, I'm going to move on to page 5. Page 5 it continues with another caution. Let's see what it's re what it reads here. Always install the battery cartridge fully until the red indicator cannot be seen. If not, it may accidentally fall out of the tool, causing injury to you or someone around you. Uh, so it basically continues with the um, speaking about the installation of the battery and the removal. Let's see beneath that we go into the battery protection system and this is interesting star marking lithium iron batteries with a star marking are equipped with a protection system this system automatically cuts off the tool the power to the tool to extend battery life the tool will automatically stop during operation if the tool and or battery are placed under one of the following conditions overloading the tool is operating in a manner that causes it to draw an abnormally high current in this situation stop the application cost the to stop the application that caused the tool to become overloaded then press the start speed adjusting button again to restart if this tool if the tool does not start the battery is overheated in this situation let the battery cool before pressing the start speed adjusting button interesting low battery voltage the remaining battery capacity is too low and the tool will not operate in this situation remove and recharge the battery. Now this I wasn't aware. I wasn't aware that the um, some of the batteries uh, contain this star marking. I'm gonna have to take a a glance over at my batteries. Let's see moving on forward. <coughs> Excuse me. Switch action and speed adjustment. Uh, again there was there's two buttons on the tool. One button's to stop the stop button and the other button is the start 
speed adjusting button. Um, to start the tool, press the start speed adjusting button. The tool starts with high speed mode. Interesting. I had set it backwards earlier. So the tool starts with the high speed mode. Each time you press the start speed adjusting button, the speed mode changes in an, in an order of high speed, middle speed, and low speed. <clears throat> to stop the tool, press the stop button. Refer to the table for the relationship between the speed mode and the kind of work. Again, earlier in the, um, in the video, we talked about the, the speed modes being high, middle, and low. High being the 1100 rota uh, rotations per minute, middle being 9500 rotations per minute, and the low being 7000, the 7000 rotations per minute. It's saying here that the high is for regular sanding, the middle is for finished sanding, and the low is for polishing. There's a note below that, on below the table that says the table shows standard applications. They may differ under certain conditions and that's understandably. Assembly, it moves on to the assembly. Caution, always be sure that the tool is switched off and the battery cartridge is removed before carrying out any work on the tool. <coughs> and it shows a picture of the pad and the uh, abrasive disc. To install the abrasive disc, first remove all the dirt or foreign matter from the pad, then attach the abrasive disc to the pad. Be careful to align the holes in the abrasive disc with those in the pad. And earlier I was trying this because this is a this this was very interesting. The uh, pads actually do come with uh, some form of velcro and uh, <clears throat> when you actually there's a little trick on aligning the pad and um, if you don't do it correctly, the holes will not align to the holes on the on the actual pad of the orbiter of the sander. And when you cover these holes, you're actually covering covering the holes that will collect the uh, dust the dust into the into the uh, dust bag. So you want to make sure that these that the that the that the abrasive disc is not covering the holes on the pad. Underneath, we're moving on forward to the installation of the dust bag, and it's an optional accessory. Interesting because you do get a dust collection, um, a dust collector on the orbit orbital machine, but according to this, there is an optional accessory, which is a dust bag. And beneath that picture, it says install the dust bag on the tool with this moth directing downwards. Let's see what we have on page 6. On page 6 it, work, it continues with the with the dust bag and it talks about how to empty the dust bag uh, and then interesting it's, interestingly enough the dust bag there's an optional accessory that one can purchase it's called the Makita paper filter bag and this filter bag can actually sit inside the um, the um, the dust bag and it looks pretty interesting because according to the according to the pictures here it looks I, I well depending on how well it works but it might be interesting and interest might be an interesting um to try out to see if it does actually catch uh, a good portion of the of the dust and traps it into these into these uh, paper filter bags I'm gonna have to look into that and then uh, it goes into not only in the installation of the paper filter bag but it also talks about how to remove the paper filter bag and um, once that is all the way at the bottom we are now moving forward still on page six with the removing and reinstallation reinstalling the skirt there's a caution here do not use the tool without the skirt otherwise dust is scattered all over 
Okay, so let's see on page 7 what we're talking about here. So interestingly enough, I hadn't I had I wasn't even aware about this, but the skirt, if you notice on page 7, if you're actually following along over here, you can see that right above the pad there's a uh, there's this part that goes around the actual pad and the sander itself and it's it's called a skirt and it looks like it's held with a with one screw so let's see what it says you can choose one of 12 directions of the skirt in accordance with accordance with your purpose to remove the skirt remove the screw and remove and remove the let's uh, let's start this again to remove the skirt remove the screw and remove the skirt with slightly opening it from from uh, for both sides and then it has a picture of what it looks like uh, the skirt without the without the screw to reinstall the skirt install it with slightly opening it for from it should be from both sides and fast and fasten the screw so this manual does appear to have a few typographical errors here there's a caution do not set the skirt other than the designated angle otherwise the tool may be damaged I'm not exactly sure what that means but <clears throat> I'm thinking that the skirt will, it looks like the skirt only goes in one way so I guess if you try to tilt it uh, further up or I'm not exactly sure if putting it upside down would make a difference but I'm uh, the same way you take it out you know put it back in uh, let's see under that we go into the operation we got a warning never switch on the tool when it is in contact with the that doesn't make sense never switch on the tool when it is in contact with the workpiece it may cause an injury to the operator so it goes into the sanding operation <coughs> excuse me there's another caution that says never run the tool without the abrasive disc you may seriously damage the pad uh, not to mention probably the <laughs> the work surface that you're working on never force the tool excessive pressure pressure may decrease the sanding efficiency and damage the abrasive disc or shorten the tool life using the tool with the pad edge contacting the work using the tool with the pad edge contacting the workpiece may damage the pad hold the tool firmly turn the tool on and wait until it attains full speed then gently place the tool on the workpiece surface keep the pad flush with the workpiece and apply slight pressure on the tool there's a caution the sanding pad rotates clockwise during the loaded operation but it may rotate counterclockwise during the no load operation interesting wow look at this polishing operation and this is optional there's a caution here use only a Makita genuine sponge pad felt pad or wool pad these are optional accessories always operate the tool at low speed to prevent work surfaces from heating from heating abnormally never force the tool excessive pressure may decrease the polishing efficiency and cause motor overload resulting in the in tool malfunction <clears throat> so apparently you can apply wax wow this is pretty cool to your vehicle it has like a picture of a, the front end of a vehicle and a hand holding the orbital sander it says number one sponge pad use an optional sponge pad apply wax to the sponge pad or work so surface run the tool at low speed to smooth out the wax there's a note here first wax a not conspicuous portion of the work surface to make sure that the tool will not scratch the surface or result in uneven waxing the tool starts with high speed mode be careful when you start the tool the wax may be spattered it is recommended that you spread the wax with the tool stopped before starting up the tool change the speed mode to low immediately after you start the tool 
always run the tool at low speed. Running it at high speed may cause the wax to spatter. Wow, interesting. And let's move on to page 8. The last page we have of the manual here is page 8 and it continues with the uh, waxing uh, portion. It says removing wax number one use a felt pad use an optional felt pad run the tool at low speed to remove the wax number three polishing and it has a use a wool pad use an optional wool pad run the tool at low speed and apply the wool pad gently to the work surface well the, the interesting thing is that you can actually do uh, your you can actually wax with and polish with this uh, orbital sander that's pretty cool and uh, last after the the this waxing and polishing uh, section it talks about the maintenance for the tool there's a caution always be sure that the tool is switched off and battery cartridge is removed before attempting to perform inspection or maintenance it says never to use gasoline, benzene, thinner, alcohol, or the like. Discoloration, deformation, or cracks may result if you do use those substances. To maintain product safety and reliability, repairs, carbon brush inspection and replacement, any other maintenance or adjustment should be performed at a Makita authorized service center, always using Makita replacement parts. Then it goes talk to uh, to it goes to mention the optional accessories. <clears throat> I'm not gonna go and read everything here, but some of the optional accessories that it looks like you can use is the hook and loop type abrasive discs that are pre punched with the holes, hook and loop type sponge pad, hook and loop type felt pad, uh, the hook and loop type wool pad. Um, talks about Makita generating batteries and chargers, dust boxes, paper filter bags, and dust bags. Interestingly, um, I'll have to look at the prices for some of these uh, optional accessories. Might be worth looking into for doing my own um, waxing and polishing of my vehicle. And the tool does come with a one-year limited warranty uh, from Makita. So if and when you do decide to purchase this tool, it might be worth to look into the Makita limited one-year warranty in case uh, if something does go wrong with your tool. Again, this is Manny, Manny Villapando from hope faith arts crafts and designs thank you for listening thank you for watching and again i shall post another video at a later time demonstrating how this makita orbital sander performs thank you very much